soil tests from you know before the track record and where we're at now to try and be more powerful about just foresight decision making and capability how do we look into the future and make better decisions for uh, the future and those decisions are around enabling environmental compliance and ensuring that we retain our social license and don't lose it by mismanaging the environment and so soil is a key part of that and we see work around the country trying to make sure that soil soils are managed appropriately to protect the environment um, the other one is there's an enormous amount of interest from our pharma groups around soil health and i know it's a, it's a big and wide and hairy kind of term but can we come up with ways of better measuring soil health through fluxes and regular changes in soil behavior and soil metrics and see what their trajectories what might be so therefore we can manage for those trajectories how is how is the microbiological health of the soil changing how is the nitrate uh, mineralization or nitrate movement through soil changing through time and you'll hear a little bit more about those in a minute um and in all of this is also and we hear a lot about this is to enable tactical better tactical use of expensive farm inputs i mean one a couple of the key costs for farmers are is the cost price squeeze because of all the supermarkets and the processing the one side of farmers the other side of farming is this input cost and one of the big ones is machinery and equipment but the other is is those inputs those agrochemical inputs so if we can put those on more wisely um, that's great so here we we're at the sense tea laboratory so it's just a fun photo of um, michael one of the things michael's done is get around the country and encourage us all in this endeavor um, and here we are in the Sense Tea Laboratory with Associate Professor Stephen Cahoon and his team, just looking at some of the sensor manufacture and capability at that facility. Um, and this is replicated around Australia, of course, in this very large family of, of researchers and, and pharma groups and government. Okay, so what are we working on currently? So the team, the HQ uh, headquarters team have helped us enormously with managing the CRC this big complex family, um, and we've been able to get this range of projects funded within program uh, two. So some of these relate to soil biology and soil health. So we were trying to go around some of the complexity of um, wet chemistry and um, DNA extraction and actually see whether we can't smell the health of the soil with existing sensor technology, if we're able to strap that together and get that into an Eno. So I've got a couple of slides, so I better keep moving to show you about that. Um, we're working quite a lot on a range of sensors and you'll hear from Craig in a minute about the nutrient sensors and also trying to take that nutrient knowledge spatially through a field using um, um, electromagnetic induction type of um, spatial comparisons. Um, in terms of rapid affordable lab on a chip technology, Dr. Yang Wang is leading a program um, across the country with a range of universities and PhD students looking at how we make put a chemistry set in a cheap chip that can be scanned by a phone and um, we can actually get also connect a uh, fertilizer model or a line model to that and actually give a farmer an answer straight away in the field as to what they might do and how they might manage their soil given given its situation. Marcus Hardy's leading a series of very large projects and um, some pretty smart technology which I'll let him talk to in a minute. Now that's all very good having all the sensor information and maybe making sure we're measuring the right thing but we've also got to show that, we've got to visualise that and um, Pro uh, Professor Dalhurst at Fed Uni is doing a, an awesome job trying to bring with his team some of this information together to enable farmers to actually instead of having these information in files and drawers and yes yes we have the state agencies information but that's often at a broader scale. Farmers need stuff on their own farm, they want to know what the track record of the information that they've already had done in the past is. They also want to be looking at the streams coming in into the present and, in, and then to model that and project it out to the future. And so Peter's leading a really important project in helping us do that. There is one area where we have fallen over and this is just to do with uh, you know, the nature of the complexity of what we're trying to achieve. And we haven't yet been able to get a, a funded project in an exceedingly important area and that is you know, better understanding of soil biological health and the indicators of that, and to drive towards sensors that could do that for farmers in, a, in some sort of field kit or some sort of sensor. So I really, that's paramount for me to try and get that funded. 
And uh, we're going to have a meeting. I'm going to organise a meeting and I'll invite a few people to that to help us scope out how we could do that better. Okay, and if you want more information on all these, you go to that site there and I'm, I'm not going to take you to it, but that's there. And it's a, a remind you that we do have this meeting uh, around our milestones uh, coming up next week. I've forgotten the exact time, but I think it's 11 o'clock today, next week. So today week. Um, so do get it. Do get on board with that, and there'll be other meetings for each of the programs. Um, Peter Dalhurst ran a great one the other day, for example, and um, Liang Wang and Marcus and, and Shane will run meetings into the future. Okay, so here's a couple of slides. So I'll just pause on them. I'm not just going to read all this. You can go to the recording of this video. Hopefully, this is is being recorded. I see the video says stop video, so I think the video is running. Um, so that's that's good but anyway smelling soil uh this is the enos project so it's really a kind of um put it together get it measuring soils in extreme environments from very waterlogged to free draining from hot to cold all sorts of environments to see what the enos can pick up with current sensor technologies um it's involving grower groups and uh, making sure that when we design a sensor and build a sensor that it's it's got that farmer input so that there's buy-in right from the beginning and that they can affect the design parameters of that. Uh, we've built several prototypes. Obviously this uh, coronavirus um, is, is causing problems for flow of gadgetry. You can see this is a prototype here in a bucket and, um, and the team have got, you know, I think waterlogged situation here given they've got in a plastic bag in a bucket. They're probably waterlogging the soil um, and, and all these little sensors are strapped on here and they're, they're detecting things, seeing what they can detect, seeing then talking to farmer groups about, is this useful and usable? Um, what, what do the grower groups know about how their soils um, are smelling and behaving? So that's, that's going very well, that project. Um, the other one that's got a few runs on the board and has um, sort of been going for a while, it's, but uh, it's bringing, this is the beautiful thing about the CIC, we're able to bring together technologies that are being developed across the country and start sticking together. You know, it's kind of the um, Steve Jobs idea, you take all the clever little components everybody's doing and see if we can't stick it in one box. Okay, so what have we got? So these these chips, these are 3D printed chips, and so 3D printing technology enables us to do this quite quickly and readily. We can put filters inside there and we can have reagents on one side of a chain, but we can allow a reaction to happen. We get a colorimetric response. Great. How do we then sense that? So utilizing a light box and a smartphone, we can take a controlled photograph of that reaction. Uh, we could put a barcode on this chip so we know uh, when we scan it with a phone, you know, what the time was, where it was in the paddock that was done and then we can just chuck that little chip in the bag and maybe even we measure it when we get back to back to the back to the office and what will happen is you'll be able to correct that for time and temperature and to to take a photo of that and actually convert that into a reading of that element okay and there's a number of elements we're trying to work on here we're starting with ph because it's the simplest and then um, that, that will also allow the smarts on a potential recommendation of a lime requirement for that field, knowing that soil type. So that's pretty cool. And these, the idea is these chips would be very cheap, you know, 10, somewhere between 10 and 50 cents. So that's that project. Here's a little bit of the smarts behind it. You can see the color reaction in the chip. This is for a range of pHs. And you look at that um, photometric, um, sorry, the color, um, red, green, blue response in the phone. Um, so that's some of the data there that we're working on. Um, I mentioned um, Professor Delhurst's work with um, the visualizing of Australasia soils, and I should say Australasia, sorry to my Kiwi cousins over there. You're definitely part of it and they've been providing enormous assistance to Peter and his team on this and really got on board. So it's really exciting to see. Um, so here you see a map of, you know, existing soil information. And this is a range of state government, farmer groups. And what's so great about this project is the effort the team have made to get out to the farmer groups and find out what types of information they've got and what types of visualisation they'd like to see and how, how they can help them um, utilise their soils better. So that's an enormously complex project with huge numbers of people involved. So 
Um, just here's a few just cool pictures of some of that happening. When I looked at the visualising Australian soils, of course, I went straight to my state and, and zoomed in. And there's a link link to that soil data on, 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 on the CRC website. So go and have a play. Here's the Enos prototype. Uh, here's, I showed some of this technology. Here's a carbon nanotubule, which is connected, which is part of an iron selective electrode that Craig will be talking about in a minute. So I'll, I'll leave that at that. There is the prototype of the Enos. It does get people excited. He's the CEO and chair of the Soil CRC, both of them you know, Paul and Michael. But this is the new vice chancellor of UTAS. And it's just great to be able to go and encourage the university to get more interested in soil and soil health uh, and help them uh, understand that we're working hard to, to manage soil resources for 7.8 billion people. And uh, this is how we're going to be doing it into the future. So. He, he gets excited about that. The other thing vice chancellors get excited about is this, the fact that the CRC will bring um, or deliver uh, 46 PhDs. Now, in reality, that means we're going to have to take on about 60 or 70 students to get that because there's, you know, there's, there's attrition. But within our program already, um, we have eight. Now, I'd hope that that would double. Um, and PhD students, it's a great way to do science because you're mentoring and growing and developing uh, a new uh, Australian scientist and uh, they're going to be there for the future and you're getting useful work and, and development done. I'm not going to go through all that family of things there. Um, one of the cool things, I guess, is that we've been able to start to do some things we, we possibly didn't think we were going to do um, within the soil space where we were going to say really close to soil and proximal to soil and in soil but these PhDs have allowed us to maybe start thinking about drones and hyperspectral imagery and getting above the soil and looking at it from a from space so we're bringing in NASA know-how here with this digital soil moisture mapping um, so that's the thing PhDs can do so um, sure they come with this uh, attrition rate and risk but they also open up relatively frugal ways of doing more with your dollar. Um, Catherine hasn't shared it with me yet, so I think I might be still going okay time-wise. I know I'm going fast. Um, we, I, I am said, shouting at you, but I'm just shouting at you in the chat, Rich. Oh, okay. uh, you've definitely okay, um, finished your allocated time. Okay, I'll stop. <laughs> right, that's good. So just look at that slide. That will be discussion for next week anyway. I'll stop. I'll stop sharing. Thank you. Uh, stop sharing. Rich, you've got a um, you've got a question there on the chat. If you want to have okay. a look at that, can you just tell it to me, just while yep. I? Sandeep um, says uh, he has a question regarding enos. Does enos detect bacterial activity that are friendly for crops? Uh, that that's the aim for it to do that. It's it's probably not picking up the, the, the microbial signals directly, it's picking up the, their impact on gases exchange, like um, volatile organic uh, chemicals, uh, compounds rather, uh, CO2 change, oxygen uh, flux change, um, how temperatures affecting those response. So, so cur currently what we've got is prototypes that are taking existing sensors that are available on the market, putting them together and putting them in extreme soil environments to see what that signal uh, pattern is. Um, Marcus Hardy is about to talk. He might, he, might, he might add a little bit more to that. So um, have I stopped sc sharing screen yet? Yes, you have, Rich. There's also a couple of people with their hands up. I don't know if um, they want to have a question. Do you want me to allow them to talk? Yep. Then? yep. Okay, Ross, I'm unmuting you if you had a question. Nope. Uh, no, I uh, didn't realise it was up. So. <laughs> totally fine. Yep. <laughs> and Caroline Mohammed, I'll uh, allow you to talk if you wanted a question, Caroline. Nope. Okay, so we'll do that. Any other questions? Um, Naomi's got a question here. Um, oh, actually, sorry, follow on, follow on question um, here we've got, uh, does the ENOS provide a bacterial count? No. No. Okay. And uh, then we've got one from um, uh, Naomi Wells. Um, 
plan for another PhD funding round? Question mark. Yep, I'll handball that to, to to Michael Crawford. But clearly, we're going to need one. I, I'm not sure how many PhDs we've got on. We've done a good job um, over the last year. I think there's it's a 30-ish, maybe upper 30s, perhaps. Um, but we'll need another round, of course. And um, Naomi, second question, is it a plan to extend funding because of COVID-19 delays? Oh, okay, I'll leave that with you. Yeah, that's, that's a question for every funding body to the Commonwealth. So I reckon it'd probably be a yes, but uh, you might be just jumping the gun a bit, yeah, bit I reckon. But yes, I, I reckon that'll have to be. Um, okay, uh, are there any other questions for Rich? All right. Um, Michael, Michael has a, a bit of an answer saying that there will be another round for PhD students likely to be next year. You can all see that on the chat though. I don't need to read that out. <laughs> People can email me and ring me. Like I'm not, not shy as you might have guessed. So if there are things I've always said, you know, be persistent, get a hold of me, um, and we'll see what we can't do. Okay, great. All right, shall I mute now and let Marcus take the floor? Go for it. Uh, <clears throat> Hi folks, it's Marcus here. Um, can you just confirm that you can see my slide presentation? Yes, we can. Just put, pop it onto presentation mode, I reckon, yeah, if you can. Yep, perfect. And so everyone can hear me? That's great. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Marcus Hardy um, from UTAS. Um, and um, I'm just going to run through some of where we're going with the smart soil sensors project. Um, importantly, we're right at the point where we really, really need feedback from farmers, researchers and um, the consultant agronomy community. So please, please bear that in mind. Um, so our purpose is to develop useful and usable technology to assist farmers make better soil based decisions. And um, our principal focus is in soil moisture at this stage. Um, some of the background is that agriculture, both in Australia and internationally, has the lowest level of technology adoption and digital adoption of any industry globally, which um, is not surprising, but fascinating. Um, the recent study that's been done on the decision to decision um, CRC stuff actually indicated that digital agriculture uh, would boost agricultural production by $20.3 billion in Australia. So there's a lot of incentive and interest in digital agriculture and sensing is a large part of that. Um, but growers are rightfully wary about adopting technology and many have been burnt um, along their journeys so far. So we talk about useful and usable. Well, what, what do we mean? Usable, by usable in our definition is tough. It has to be able to be thrown in the back of the ute. It's got to be simple to use. You, you've got to be able to use it without knowing a lot about soils or technology. Um, we need technology that can work in areas that's got three or 4G connection and in areas that don't. Around 60% of our farms still do not have mobile phone connectivity. Um, and so we need devices that can work without that connectivity and we need devices that you can pair to a phone or not pair to a phone that can be worked simply or with greater augmentation of information and data. And one of the things that's come back from the growers is we've got to have the right tool for the right depth of crop. Um, and we've got to understand in what soils some of these tools do and don't work. And the example I've got in this photo here is the pogo. Um, is that able to be chucked in the back of the ute? Is that suitable for our hard crusted 
compacted soils. So we've got to develop more farm friendly technology than what's out there on the market today. And useful, it has to be useful. So much of the technology is starting with the sensor. It's starting with, we can measure this, therefore we've got something useful for farmers. So that's not the way we do things. We ask, you know, what decision are we trying to inform? Who makes the decision? How do they decide now? You know, what information do they ideally want to make that decision? How do we convert data to information? And then what sensors do we need to generate the data in the first place? And then at the end of the day, does it pass the pub test? So in many ways, we're looking at this the other way around from the way in which a lot of the ag tech is actually going, which is from the sensor up to the decision. That's the wrong way around. We need to be useful. So we started with the premise and the understanding that a lot of farmers had given up on their moisture probes and had gone back to walk in the paddock with a shovel to measure and look at soil moisture and irrigation and things like that. So we started out planning to build a smarter shovel, a shovel with sensors. But the growers, actually, when we dug deeper, pardon the pun, said that it didn't need to dig and it doesn't need to look like a shovel. So that freed us up to consider a whole range of other designs. Um, and the other thing that became apparent was that no one tool or shovel or probe was going to meet the needs of our diverse range of growers and their soils and the types of decisions they're making because they're making different irrigation and moisture based decisions in different regions for different purposes. And whilst we could have built a shovel looking thing, it wouldn't have met our definition of usability, um, particularly in terms of being rugged. So these are the concepts we've come up with. Now we've got animations for most of these, but because of bandwidth, I'm not gonna try and play them now. I'll try a couple at the end of the presentation. So this is the screw concept. It's really around short rooted crops, irrigated crops, um, soft to medium hard soils. Um, it would measure salinity and moisture and it could probably go to 30, maybe 50 centimetres depth. And you'd actually use a foot pedal rather than your own upper body to actually drive it into the ground. Right, concept one. Here's the fork concept. The idea of the fork is that um, it's for short rooted crops, irrigated softish soils. It's you know, the veggie growing type guys that are interested particularly in that top soil moisture. And basically you put your foot in and you stomp on it, but it's got these retractable, retractable probes so that it's not a safety issue. It's not spiking you. And it's got LCD displays actually on the tool itself. Next tool is the penetrometer. A lot of interest in this. It's for the medium rooted crops, moderately compacted soils. You know, we're looking at trying to go to 60 centimetres or 80 centimetres. Um, and in the tip, it's got an integrated load cell and capacitive soil moisture sensor. Hopefully operate to 3 MPA, maybe less. Um, the notion around this is around portability, being able to move quickly get a lot of readings simply, safely in a tool in which the tip actually retracts inside it. So it doesn't have that issue with a lot of probes today with penetrometers of having a, a sharp tip waving around in a, a ute cab or the back of a ute or as you try and use it. And all these tools would be, you know, as much as possible automated. This one would be actually um, electronically driven or hydraulically. And the fourth concept, this is for a, a really tough soils. Um, you can't penetrate into a tough soil until you really start drilling. So here we're looking at a drill design that would measure soil moisture as it's drilling through the soil profile. The idea is it would go to at least a metre's depth and it could be operated by one or two people depending on how hard that soil is. Um, and what we're really after is feedback on these ideas and these concept designs. We really, that's what we were hoping to get out of the conference and workshop, which unfortunately had to be cancelled. We were planning a booth and display of these things being mocked up so people could come and tell us what they reckon and um, give us you know, very direct feedback on where we're going and what we're thinking. Um, sorry. 
with all these tools, we're looking at uh, the visualization storage and management of the data, focusing on visualization tools. So the, the thinking at the moment is the tools would have very simple information, reading done and here's the answer type stuff. Um, but you'd also have that paired to a mobile phone that would be able to do real time crigging of the data and generating maps and transects and even indicating where you should go to do your next test if you want to build a map. So there's a lot of stuff that we can do in terms of that visualization and storage and presentation of management that, that Roy is leading in USQ. And we're after feedback on this as well. The other major part of the project smart sensor project is around below ground communications. Um, we know and understand that if we can get a lot of the electronics underground, then we can open up um, the ability to measure away from laneways and gates and fences or safe areas. Um, and we increase the traffic ability. So the notion is that you'd have a sensor unit, a probe and a communication box that would communicate to an above ground receiver. And that would be in a safe place, like on a fence line, gateway, out of the crop itself, and that we'd be able to comfortably transmit data 100, 200 plus meters. Um, and that this thing would send data, you know, a couple of times a day or maybe once a day, depending on um, the farmer preferences. The issue with this is always power management. You know, you can't put a solar panel underground. Um, how do you keep it charged and running for a long period? And we're looking at some novel approaches to trying to solve some of those questions. But we're also hoping to look, I'll go on, sorry. So we've actually developed a prototype board that we can start playing with and testing the communication ability. We're basing everything on being STI 12 for existing soil probes. So the, the prototype we're working on the moment is to connect to existing probes, multi depth capacitance probes. Um, and it will communicate via LoRa, but programmed and set up and run in ways that above ground LoRa doesn't work. And we're also looking at alternative approaches. Maybe radio frequency is not the way to go. Um, maybe there are other ways in which we can communicate underground that haven't been explored yet. So we're hoping to prize some of these things open a little bit. So onto our PhD, we've got a collection of fantastic PhD students doing some really novel, dangerous and daring work. And um, Darren's right up there. Um, Darren's actually uh, suspended himself for six months to pursue a really good business opportunity. Um, and we're expecting that he'll be returning uh, back to the project once uh, that's elapsed. Um, what he's trying to do is he's trying to use soil moisture probe readings from you know everyday probes that you guys um, know and love and can buy off the shelf. Can we use that information to understand the soil in which that probe is actually installed? Can we derive the retention curve? And if we can, if we can do that, then we can do a lot of things like self-parameterizing models. We can convert soil moisture to matrix potential and crop stress automatically. We can set refill points and fuel capacity based on data rather than guesses. There's, there's a lot that we could do. Um, and so his, his approach is around, uh, people think of it as AI or big learning, big data. It's not really, but it's similar sort of principles in which we've got a model. We've got a probe measuring data and we've got a model predicting data and we compare the two and then we tweak the parameters until it gets closer and closer and closer until we've got the model telling us the same as the moisture over a range of moisture contents. And then we've got a model that's parameterized. If the model's telling us the same as the probe, well then we know those soil parameters. Um, so he's working on that. He's um, about nine months in, I think, but currently suspended. Um, another really exciting project has been done by Ben. Ben Berman at uh, Federation University. And what he's trying to do is instead of just communicate data below ground, he's actually trying to understand if we can measure soil moisture by sending a radio frequency underground. One of the big problems we've got with sensors at the moment is very few of them measure more than about one or two centimeters away from the 
the sensor, which means that they're very prone to error with being installed in a funny bit of soil or a ga air gap forming around them. You know, how do we have confidence in irrigating you know, 50 hectares from something that's measuring something in the width of your finger? Well, this is, this is the way around that, that. We might be able to put the receiver and the transmitter a metre apart or 30 centimetres apart in the soil. And actually by measuring how the signal moves through the soil, calibrate that back to soil moisture. So that's a, a very exciting project that he's working on. It's, it's really that focus on how do we get beyond small scale measurement to this medium scale measurement. Um, and that's, that's the process that Ben's working through. Um, and we also uh, have Ara, Arna Yitra has just joined the team. He's only been with us for a few weeks now. And um, his project's the Soil Sucker. And what that's about is that there's been really big advances in analytical chemistry that we can measure nutrients from as little as one or two drops of water. The problem is, how do we get those one or two drops of water out of soil? How do we do that in wet and dry soils? And so he's looking at a range of approaches, including a vacuum, pressure, or even spinning to get water out of soil in a way that we can relate it to the available water, the readily available water in these concepts. And it's really a new way of thinking about nutrient availability. It's the nutrients within the moisture range that the plants are able to extract at that point in time. And we look, we're looking at things like actually doing the chemical extraction in the soil in the field, rather than what we do now is grab a bit of soil, add an extractant, shake it for an hour, centrifuge it off or, or, or filter it off and then send that liquid away for analysis. So we're trying to shortcut that whole front end. It's, it's a very exciting project. Um, so this is actually the project team and our grower group. You can see a lot of people involved. It's a very big project. And um, we're deliberately trying to do some creative novel ways of advancing how we can measure soils and soil properties. Now, what I'm hoping I can do is just exit out of this. And if fate is lucky to now, hold on. Now, I should be able to go and share. Let me know, can people see that animation? Yep, we sure can. Okay, so this is uh, the penetrometer design for measuring soil moisture and penetration resistance simultaneously. Uh, this component would um, house the motor on something like a linear actuator or something else. And it will penetrate into the soil and be fully retracted back into the device so that it could be safely stored and moved and carried around. And there'd be electronics embedded into the handle head system so you can read that you've successfully taken data and measurements. Right. Can you see that as an animation of a new tool? All right, sounds like. Can people see that as the the fork? Yep, we can yes. see it, Marcus. Yeah, okay. we can see it. Thanks, so, Marcus. So this is the notion of, of the fork, is the a foot pushed in probe um, awesome. with readings on it, simple readings on it, telling you what you've done, you know, where it is, the numbers you've got, an L C D display. So built really, really tough. And of course with the more detailed data would be um, sent through to the phone that you could be either clipping onto it or hand holding. And of course, all of it can get uploaded to the sky when you're back into a place with connectivity. All right, I'm just gonna try and kill that and go to the next one. And the third animation. 
Marcus, just a time warning. You're pretty much at the end of your allocated time. I don't doubt that for a moment. <laughs> um, so this will be the last one. If I can share that with people. Can you see this one now? The yep. animation? So this is the notion of the drill and that the, the drill would be in here on a motor, would be battery powered. Um, and that we'd actually have a moisture sensing tip um, in the drill tip that would be smart enough to do its job, but not so smart that it's not easily and cheaply replaceable. Um, and that it's designed here to be carried in the field and quite mobile, but still safe for people to use. And um, would have automatic cutouts so that the, the torque doesn't get too much if it hits a rock or starts, you know, throwing you around. Um, so designed from a safety and practicality perspective. And um, we hope to build a tool that will go to a meter. Um, thank All you. Right. That's that's me done. Yeah, we better keep moving, I think, Marcus. Yep. So I think we'll can we just hold questions to the end? Is it possible? So Craig, you able to share your screen, mate? Thank you, Marcus. It's awesome. Nice, nice animations. Cool. Okay, so you can hear me and see that okay? It's beautiful. Uh, yeah, so my name is Craig Lobsey. I'm based at USQ and uh, working on this um, project with the CRC, Novel Sensor Technology to Measure and Map Soil Nutrients. Uh, we've got a, a fairly diverse project team. So we're working, well, there's a few of us at the University of Southern Queensland involved in this project, uh, working also with Landcare Research in New Zealand and some uh, industry collaboration as well, in particular Rob Miller from Bodicum Productivity Service Services and also uh, Lawrence Bella from Herbert Kane Productivity Services. And so quite a diverse group and uh, interesting group to work with. So I won't go into too much of this background because I understand that we're a bit of time constraint here, but uh, I just wanted to reiterate, it's something I think that's fairly underappreciated, is that we're trying to do all these things uh, in the CRC and elsewhere around uh, improving soil performance and making better soil management decisions. And I think it's underappreciated just how dependent all this work is on soil information, uh, especially when you consider, as um, Rich mentioned, the, the variability uh, at field scales through depth as well. So we have a three dimensional and time for a four dimensional problem. And so this project is really about trying to provide um, more detailed, timely and better soil information via sensing. And this is of course something that we've been working on uh, as a community for, for many years now. Uh, but what is lacking within the soil sensing community is the ability to measure uh, chemical properties of the soil. And so that's the real focus of this project. Uh, in particular, the ability to uh, measure and monitor soil nutrients. And so it's a challenging problem to deal with, uh, particularly the, the high spatial variability and temporal variability of these properties. Uh, they're difficult to manage as well in terms of management decisions on farm uh, due to the mobility or lack thereof of how they move through the soil profile. And so we see this not so much as just developing a sensor that can measure uh, nutrient or chemical status of the soil, um, but it requires a, a lot more. So it requires um, developing sensors that can do that, of course, uh, but also sensors that can measure properties that define you know, the dynamics, the supply of nutrients, buffering, and, and how they move through the soil. And so it's about developing an understanding and ultimately models and a framework that incorporate all this information in order to make more informed decisions. And so in this project in, in particular, we're aiming to develop, I guess I would say enabling sensor technology that will provide low cost rapid in-field assessment of soil chemical and nutrient status and more efficient measurement and mapping of both soil water and hydraulic characteristics that ultimately, as I said, determine that mobility through the soil profile. And so the project we've, we've um, well, still be operating for less than a year now uh, so I'll give you a bit of a uh, background 
on some of the activities that we're performing and where we're at with these, these activities. But the project's divided into three activities. Uh, the first one is developing and evaluating electrochemical sensing as a technique for low cost rapid assessment of uh, chemical properties. And that's, that was designed to, to address uh, some CRC priorities there, 3.2.3. Uh, we have another activity and that's developing algorithms that can utilize spatial temporal electromagnetic induction surveys. And so this is taking existing sensors that are being used by uh, practitioners already in pharma, such as the EM38 or the Julium, and getting more useful information out of these sensors. Uh, in this case, by uh, repeating surveys throughout a growing season. And so we hope to um, improve the usability of these sensors and provide more timely information on soil moisture and extract more information from these sensors. And the third activity that we're working on is developing improved methods of measuring soil water retention characteristics. And so I'll talk about this a little bit more, but the idea is that, that combined uh, these three activities and developing these, these sensing technologies will actually give us uh, the information that we need to move on and start developing uh, more advanced frameworks that actually incorporate climate information and the understanding and models that we have in order to make better management decisions. So the first activity, yeah, we're looking at soil chemical sensing. And as Rich mentioned, there's, there's a few approaches being undertaken within the CRC, um, such as the lab one chip colorimetric approach. Uh, here we're looking at electrochemical sensing and we have a PhD student, Jay Hill, and so she's working on sensing. Uh, I have a background in electrochemical sensing as well. Uh, some of the key advantages of this approach and, and why we favor this technique is that the sensors themselves can directly analyze uh, in a soil slurry. So it really reduces the amount of sample preparation required. So there's no filtration or centrifuging uh, needed in this case. Uh, they can perform fairly rapid analysis and so you can, uh, in this case, you can add a soil sample to an extracting reagent and you can actually observe the ion exchange kinetics as they take place. And so what this enables is, is you to make uh, estimates or predictions on plant available nutrient content, uh, contents uh, within a very, very short time frame. Uh, another key advantage of this approach is that the sensors are multi-use. And so it's not for a single analysis. You can perform a number of analysis using these sensors and there's been some recent developments in the technology, in particular, the availability of screen printed electrodes and uh, ionophores that allow us to develop sensors that are hopefully selective for phosphate. And so, yeah, with these, these recent developments, it really has brought the, the cost. So electrochemical sensing or ion selective electrodes is something that we've looked at previously, uh, but they've traditionally been quite expensive and had issues around stability. Uh, but there's new, new type of approaches and techniques uh, hopefully we'll address some of these problems. And so to date, uh, Jay has been working um, on developing sensors that are specific to these particular um, chemical properties or nutrients using this, uh, this screen print electrode technology. And so she's been developing techniques to custom fabricate these sensors and selecting appropriate ionophores and compositions that will allow us to measure and use these sensors within soil extracts and commonly used soil extracts such as the BSESP or coal wall. Uh, she's been completing fabrication and evaluating the performance of these sensors in the lab and that works uh, ongoing at the moment. And as I mentioned, uh, yeah, a particular focus currently is assessing compatibility with common extracting reagents. And so it's an interesting approach, I would say, uh, slightly different to what else has been uh, attempted within the CRC and elsewhere. Um, but I think a, a fairly promising approach. For the second activity in the project, as I mentioned, we're looking at electromagnetic induction and, and better utilizing these sensors such as the EM38 and the Julium that are currently deployed uh, by farmers and PA consultants in industry. And so it's a fairly well-established sensing technique. Uh, what we're trying to do is extract additional value from this technology and by doing this through repetitive surveys throughout a growing season. And what we hope is that this will give us greater insight into soil variability, uh, hydraulic properties of the soil also, 
uh, ultimately nutrient mobility and help us to as a, uh, generate better covariates that we can use to extend our sensor measurements of nutrients and other properties uh, across the field and through time. And so one application was, um, and in terms of practicality of deploying these sensors is actually to utilize some of the recent developments within agricultural robotics. And so I see this as a, a perfect sensor that can be deployed and a perfect platform that can deploy and, and develop or generate this data. And so in terms of where we're at with this activity, uh, we've selected a few sites. So we have a site in Queensland, a cropping site and a pasture based site in New Zealand, where we're going to go and perform this work and collect this data. Uh, it was to commence soon, but obviously uh, the current situation, things might be delayed somewhat. Um, but if, if you need, if, or if you'd like more information on what we're actually planning here, uh, feel free to contact me and I can give you some more detail on that. Uh, the third activity that we're looking at is improving measurement of soil water retention curves. So it's a fairly critical soil parameter, in particular parameterizing and using some of the crop models that we have. And what we're looking to achieve here is develop uh, some method of cost effective and high sample throughput uh, using sensor-based approaches. Uh, and we hope to do this by developing automation frameworks around some existing sensor technologies. And the idea would be to deploy this in the laboratory. This wouldn't be a field-based technique. And part of the reason for this and, and our motivation and thinking is that uh, we see that vis NIR spectroscopy is a promising technique that allows you to take very rapid measurements uh, within seconds in situ as well in the field. It can give us um, very detailed information throughout the soil profile where we need to gather this information. Uh, we can be predicting multiple soil properties from these measurements. It's cost effective per measurement and it's portable. And so we can take this sensing technique out to the field and, and measure through depth at any location that we like. And so this is the field-based component that we see and the sensing technique that we see. Um, and we've done some, all members of, of this team have done some work. So Pierre and Caroline at Landcare Research previously, and I'm, I'm aware of some other research that's been done of, of late as well around using this sensing approach to predict soil water characteristics. And it seems to be very, very promising. Uh, one of the key drawbacks and limitations, however, is the requirement for developing calibrations. And so that's what we're hoping to, to solve uh, in this project is, and, and this is obviously a problem because I don't know if anyone's experienced uh, working and trying to develop soil water retention curves in the laboratory, it's a very time consuming and laborious task. And so the availability of, of data sets there for calibration uh, is very limited. And so we hope to address this within our project by developing uh, more cost effective, less labor intensive laboratory methods. And so we've recently completed an extensive review of different sensor technologies and approaches that we could use uh, and develop an automation framework around. And so the key idea or the key purpose of this review was to identify uh, a particular technology and approach that would be the best opportunity. And so far we're looking at using gamma ray densitometry, which is a uh, technique that I'm familiar with as well. Um, but what it does is allow you to take a soil sample, intact soil sample, perform non-contact measurements of volumetric water content that might be undergoing evaporative drying in the laboratory. And then similar to the approach uh, that Marcus was talking about, we can then solve for hydraulic parameters uh, using inverse solution. And so this is uh, the technique that we're looking at and we're looking to develop now. Uh, so again, if you, if you want any more information on what we're planning, uh, you're welcome to contact me. And that's pretty much all I have. Uh, some general conclusions. The key thing, I guess, for us is that sensors offer a solution to the problem of, of generating the soil information that we really need. Uh, but where we're lacking now is we ha don't have the direct information on the key attributes that we require. And so these are the chemical properties, uh, properties such as available water capacity and soil water uh, retention characteristics and also the biological, uh, biological characteristics as well. And so that's what we're hoping to address in this project. Thank you.